All right, so welcome back. And on this one, we're going to talk about the transient control. Now, the transient control is a transient designer, just a different name. So what we can do with this one, we can increase the punch or decrease the punch of something, or we can increase the sustain or remove the sustain of something. Now, with this transient control, you can do three things. You can use it as a sidechain. You can use it as a standard uh, transient uh, designer, or you can use it to modulate effects. First, we're going to talk about the most obvious one, which is uh, increasing the punch or the sustain or decreasing the punch or the sustain. Now, you get several knobs right here, and I'm not going to talk about the time control right now. I'm just going to talk about the gain, because just with the gain, you can achieve this boost or cut or uh, with the sustain and the attack. So I'm going to go to the snare and I'm going to play it. And notice that right now, if I turn this off, we just get nothing. We just get pretty much the same snare. Let me go up in volume. Same snare. All right, so for that. Okay, so now remember this transient control, what it will do, it will increase the punch or decrease the punch. And this is the attack control. The attack will just detect the transient and it will go up in volume just so we can hear more of the punch. Notice we get much more of the punch. It's too loud. Okay, so of course you can do the opposite. You can remove the punch of something. All right, so that's it. You're getting rid of the punch. Then of course you can do the same thing with the sustain. Maybe you want more body. The, uh, you want to catch and uh, you get more of the body of the snare. You can easily do this with the sustain. You get more body. And of course, if you want something shorter, you go all the way down and you're just getting rid of the body of the uh, snare. Now, if you think about this, why do we get the transient control? Yeah, it's pretty simple to use. It's obvious what it does, but why do we get them? So, you know, as you know, with a compressor, let me just find it first. With a compressor, what you can do, you can tweak the threshold, the input, the ratio, and then the attack and release to, of course, uh, chop the punch, uh, the initial transit of something, or you can boost it or get more body out of, out of something. The problem is that sometimes it's hard to work with a compressor. And sometimes you don't get what you want. And you might spend 10 minutes or, I don't know, five, I don't know, uh, just a, a, an amount of time uh, modifying the knobs just to get what you want. And the transient control will do just the same in just up or down. That's it. That's why we get transient designers. Just to do what, whatever we want with a compressor, but a bit more, uh, you know, easy, in an easy way. All right, so that's it. You can increase, decrease the punch, increase the sustain, which is the tail, or remove the tail. Now then, of course, you get a visual representation of what you're doing right here. If I do play, and you go up to the punch, it can, it can tell you right here how much you're going up in volume and when you're going down. And if we do the opposite, if you go the opposite direction, it's going to tell you how much you're cutting. Same thing with the sustain. If you go up, it's going to tell you how much sustain. And notice that the uh, visual representation of what you're doing is different. All right. So now it's time to talk about the time control because it's very related to this. Now the time control, notice at the top, you get a purple and a yellow line. So the yellow line is going to be the uh, one in the attack, and the purple and the one in the sustain. Right? Makes sense. Now this ones, although they just, you know, uh, sound the same because they have the same name, they will do different things. And that's why you have an arrow right here because they are they just do different things. So if we think about this again, I'm going to go here. And uh, if we talk about the attack, what we are doing in theory, and actually in practice too, we are just the, the transit control is going to go recognize right here that we have a waveform is going to say, oh, okay, so I want to add punch. I'm going to go and go up in volume. I'm going to go up in volume. It's like us doing do something like this with the uh, right here with the mixer. We're going to go up in volume. Now, of course, at one point you need to go down, right? So let me just go back. No, okay, I'm going to go and do it again. So we are going up in volume. Now, if you rise the volume and you never go down, the only thing you're doing is just going up in volume. You're just rising the volume because you're never going down. So at one point you need to go down. And this is the visual representation of what we get right here. If I go to the attack and increase it, and of course gonna remove the sustain, we, we go up, oops, sorry, let me go down. 
we go up in volume and then at one point we need to go down because if not the only thing you're doing is just going up in volume so what it's, it's going to do is going to go and one at one point is going to go down right now this is the time control you're going to decide when you're going to start going down in volume so of course you select like a short time you're going to do something again something like this you're going to start earlier but if you go higher in the time controls you're going to start going down much later and of course if you overdo the time control you are you're going to pretty much never go down so you're the only thing you're doing is just going uh, up in volume you're rising the volume that's why the time control is important is is uh, you're going to decide when you start going down in volume so i'm going to remove this and remove this as well all right so uh, i'm going to go right here i'm going to play it again and notice again if i'm going to go up the punch at one point we go down if i go up in time notice that this is going to it's going to start changing and at one point we just never go down notice right here we're going to get to peaks everything is like smooth and then you're just never going down which is not right not what you want to do now of course you always decide what depends on the sound you're using you just select the, the the correct time for you and at the top you get a visual representation of how much the time is doing if you go up again notice that this starts to switch to flip all right so then uh, of course you get the uh, time on the sustain and this one is a little bit different because what it does uh, the sustain is different what you're doing instead of boosting the initial transient you're boosting the last part of the uh, of the waveform you're boosting this you're going up in volume right here on the tail so the time control is going to decide when you're going up if you're going up right here to catch this part of the tail or you start going up in volume maybe right here you know maybe here and you're catching this part of the tail and it's really important because if you want to boost this part and you go up on the time control you're going to be catching this part and not this part that's why the time control and the sustain is important so let me just go here and delete this uh, i'm going to leave it so remember again if you want to uh, go up and catch most of the body you will need to select the time control that will start right here now, if I go and uh, go back and remove the automation, we can clearly see what's going on right here on this one. I'm going to go and just make everything default and go up on the sustain. Let me go down in volume. All right. So notice right here, I'm gonna, you can click it and frozen and freeze this, which is pretty cool. We are catching part of the transient. If I go all the way down at the time, it's going to start much earlier. All right. And of course, the, notice that the uh, right here, this one, it goes much faster to this, much aggressive. If I go up, down on the time control, everything is going to start really, really later. It's going to start much later. So we're going to catch the tail, the last part of the tail. So memorize this, uh, this, uh, this picture. I'm going to go and play it again. And notice that right now we are just getting the tail and the uh, the transition is much smoother so of course it's uh, the time control is really important because again you just need to decide which part you're gonna you want to get so then what you get is this uh, peak and the rms i'm gonna go all the way uh here and i'm gonna go really aggressive on the time and maybe i'm gonna do uh, a little bit of this I'm going to start playing again and maybe I'm going to go a little bit more and okay so notice that right here we go up and then at one point it goes back to the original to, to the beginning and it starts uh, doing the same now the peak is going to decide how you're going to be detecting this so one one the peak control is going to be a bit more aggressive and the other one is, is much slower it's smoother so if I play this notice that the this is different it's a little bit more smoother All right, so that's it. That's it. That's the the only difference. Um, then, you, of course, you get the mix control, and in this one, you can decide how much of the of the unprocessed signal, which is just a snare, uh, you want to get, and how much you want to blend it with the processed signal. Right? So pretty simple.
So then, of course, you get the device input. And this one is really cool. I'm going to go to almost uh, pretty much do nothing right here. And I'm going to make a copy to this sound. Let me just show you what I got right here. I'm going to mute this and I'm going to just play it back. It's just the polysynth with a C chord. That's, that's it. Nothing really weird. Just a C chord. Now, what you can do, uh, you can use the transient control to uh, as a sidechain. So this is the other function we get with the transient control besides boosting or cutting. So I'm going to go and uh, just copy this right here to the polysynth. And I'm going to say, OK, so now instead of using this sound, the polysynth, to do a little bit of transient control, I'm going to go and say the snare is going to trigger this. So now this transient control will listen to the snare and it will follow the instructions of the snare. So the peaks of the snare and the sustain of the snare will modify the sound of the polysynth. So if I play it, you're just not doing anything. But if I start going up, so that's it. Maybe you're going to go down and punch. So we are using the transient control with the side chain and the snare is going to decide when we go down in volume and when we start go going up. Right. So that's the other function we get this. We can easily use this as a side chain. Same you would do with a compressor using it as a side chain compressor. All right. So this is the all of the, the way we can use the transient control. Then you have another one, which is pretty cool. You don't find this on any transient designer, just on Bitwig, which is pretty cool. That's why we love it. So you can use an effects. Now, the effects, what it's going to do, it will react on, of course, the process signal. But you get the attack and you get this sustain. So I'm going to go and just show you this so you can see the example, because it's kind of hard to explain with words. But when you see, once uh, you see this, it's pretty obvious. So, OK. So remember, we uh, do get instructions right here. When uh, this is going to detect the transient, something is going to happen right here. We go up, and then we need to go down at some, po some point. So if I go and select the attack, I'm going to say, OK, so what I want to do, every time we detect the, this punch, I'm going to go up on this knob, and then I'm going to go down. So if I go and play it, notice that this one is moving. Right. And of course, I'm going to play the snare so we can hear it. And notice that we get this filter effect. So we are using this, uh, whatever we get from the, uh, from the envelope of the snare to modulate this control. You can still use it as a transfer designer. We're still boosting the punch. But now, in addition, it will control what happens uh, on the filter, on this control. Now, notice that the original original position of the blue dot, gonna go and play it, is not really aligned with the control of the uh, of the frequency. And this is because the, on the time right here, we have a, a little bit of separation. If I go all the way down, they are pretty much aligned. And if I go up, we are just going to position this on a different uh, place. Now, this is completely up to you. You can easily move this around, of course. So this is the third way uh, we get with the transient control. We can use it as a modulation effects, which is really cool. Just one single plugin, and you can use it for three different things. All right. So I hope this was fun. Catch you on the next one.